Hey everybody, I know it's been a while, it's Trav. So what we're gonna talk about is something I think that is really important and that is cheese. I think cheese is an important thing. No, not really, I do love cheese, but that's another story, that's another video. What we're gonna talk about is a lot of people that have basically almost all the AGT products from the mini excavator, the Q um, H12s, probably the FFs, some of the skid steers, um, front idler issue. Okay, but before I go out and talk about this, what I wanna talk about is one thing. I have to give a shout out to guys playing with tools. He helped push me over 1,000. That means a lot to me. I'm not doing this for anything other than to help people. And that really was impressive to have somebody go ahead and help me go above beyond and get me to the 1000 marker of subscribers. So to all you that are subscribers, I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much. Now, without further ado, let's get started. All right, here's the problem. You see this? This is in your idler. This is your problem. This is a 6205 RS. Um, it is a grooved ball bearing and what i mean is it's a ball it's got a groove and it sits like this and goes around this cannot handle side to side loads unlike your regular tapered bearings that can so what i've done um i'm not going to show you the whole ins and outs of it but basically i'm going to just give you kind of like a stair step of how to do this and there'll be pictures off on the side it's not that hard. I've got a picture of how to remove your idler. I've got a picture or I've got a video of how to remove your idler. I've got a video on how to take your idler apart. So if you need those, you can go into those and find them and I'll have them in the description to help you out. Now, tools and stuff that I've used, I'll have in the description also. And if there's anything else that I can remotely think of that I might've forgot you're going to probably hear some thunder in the background. It's getting kind of spicy outside. So here we go. Like I said, this is a 6205. This is a sealed bearing. It's nice. I mean, it rolls good, all that. The problem is, is like I said in the beginning, it cannot handle side to side play. So I went with the tapered bearings and the bearings I went with, with are that I installed are the 3205s. Now they are 25 by 52 by 16, uh, 25 millimeter. Um, basically the same ones that are in trailers. You can get them Amazon. You can get them through wherever, but that's what I used was the 30205. Um, so without further ado on that, here we go. So, Basically, you're going to see the dust caps on both sides of your idlers. Go ahead. You can reuse these. Don't beat the hell out of them and just start ripping on them. The reason why, and this is a cool thing, those are also, when they get sandwiched in there, bottom of your idler arms, they help keep anything from getting in there. So if you were to go ahead and get the other one, the little black one that's in the picture, You've got all that room between the idler and stuff that's going to cause problems. So do everything you can to just gently pry it up. Now, you can take some WD-40 around the shaft of the axle or whatever else you want to call it and just lube it up and just gently work it around. And then after a while, you just take some screwdrivers on each side and just walk it up and it's fine. You'll see in the pictures. Okay. Once you get that, clean the area very well. You know, just clean up any funk and dirt. After you get that, um, remove the snap rings. They're a pain in the ass. You're gonna have to figure out cool ways. What I did was I got it out of the groove and then I could work a little rod in there with a 90 on there and I got it there and then I would pop this, the snap ring back out and it came out. Luckily I didn't shoot it somewhere in this garage because Lord knows it got lost. After you get through that, You've got both of them off. Some people might want to just take one. No, you're going to want to take both of them off. Go ahead, rubber hammer, or if you've got a press, 
press it all the way through. Take the whole assembly, the shaft, and the bearings on the inside of the idler and drive it out. Now, once you got it out, take your bearings, get them off. Some people are going to have problems with this because two different axles I had had two different problems. The tolerances were sloppy on one and the other one really tight. So I ended up having to press, take the press, go down and drive it out. Basically separating the bearing here, flip it over, pull the shaft out, clean the shaft up, deburr it, go through it, clean it up, put it off this side, take the bearings, throw them away. Okay. Now you got that out. You've got just your idler, clean it out. Now, one thing I recommend, look inside for scratches, scrapes, or anything that just does not look right. Take a home. It'll be in the description of the one I use. Go back and forth, smooth that out a little bit. Get all that deep, get that thing deburred, clean it up really good. Go back through, clean it again. I use acetone or basically brake cleaner. Okay, once you're done there, you've got that area all separated. Just make sure that you don't have anything scratched up. Take the race and the shaft. The race is the thing that holds, this is your bearings, okay? Take that, take the race and the shaft and put them in your freezer. Put them in as long as for about four to five hours. Put them off to the side. Grab your bearings, grease them up like, you know, there's many on videos and people, I'm not gonna tell you how to do it. Everybody does it differently, but just grease those up, okay? While then those parts are freezing, just go back through everything. Just make sure you've got everything that you got all cleaned up and ready to go. I know I'm reading from my notes, but it's a little bit easier. Okay, now you've got everything ready. Go grab one race out of the freezer, race, just one of them, and drop it into your idler. Now, you're going to notice it's coned this, you know, it's like this. Take that way and drop it, okay? Drop it down past the C-clip ring, okay? Just get it past that C-clip ring. Take the C-clip, put it in right behind it. Lock it in there. Flip it 180. Now that you got it there, now you got your idler sitting here. You got the race up inside. Take the bearing, put the cone to meet the race on the inside, drop it in. Just put it down there. You can put a little bit of grease in there and put it in there. Go get the shaft. Drop it into the bearing. This is the reason why I was saying cooling it helps restrict it a little, or cooling shrinks metal. Gives you a little bit of tolerance. Put that in there, okay? Now that you've got there, take grease. Put it inside there. It's only gonna be about that much all the way around. But don't go above the stop to the next, for the next roller, okay? From there, you go ahead, you drop in your next roller, coned up this way. As soon as it's down there and seated, then you go ahead, you take your race, you put your race in there. Then take the C-clip. Now, here's where you're gonna run into a situation with these. You gotta remember, these ain't perfectly machined, and I'm not talking the bearings, I'm talking the actual idler wheel. There is a possibility that you're gonna have to probably take off a little bit of metal on that ring, because it might stick up just enough into that ring where you can't get it in that ring. It's at your call. If you want to grind it down a little bit, I did. Trust me, didn't make a difference. Locked it in, everything seated fine. But that's it. You're done. Take the duck, clean it up real good. Take a little bit of grease, you know, probably about, I'd say an eighth of an inch all the way around the bearing house. Make sure everything else all the way around is cleared. Take your dust cap, go back and lightly uh, WD-40 on the shaft a little bit, slide it on down. Squish it down there, take you the sockets, whack it on there, and it seats perfect. Flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. Now, with those seals, here's the cool thing. These seals, actually the little black piece in the center spins. The actual house doesn't, but there's a little piece that lip seal that spins on the shaft. That also can mimic whether or not, it's kind of funny. I figure, 
so I sprayed WD-40 inside mine when it shot a little grease in there and I got it to move a little bit freer. I think that's part of the issue that a lot of people are having when they try to spin it. You're fighting that grease seal too, but that is. That's it. Now, here's something else. Those bearings we just called out, those bearings are the exact same ones in the rollers and the idler. Those are also in the same ones in my KTT23. Now, I might do a video on replacing the bearings in the KTT23 that I have, but I got to do the walk around with it first, but the bearings seem like they're pretty stable. So in all, this is not that hard of a job. The cool thing is, like I said, with the seal, that seal to me is actually one of the smartest things I could have ever done. It makes it a lot easier. Now you can put the little black seal that's in the picture if you want, but remember a lot of crap's going to get in there. Now the rollers, the rollers, and what I'm talking is the ones that are sitting on the ground that you roll on. Okay. They are the exact same process. They have the same dust covers, the same set of snap rings, and the same bearings. So if you ever had to, the exact same scenario I just told you or job I laid out for you is exactly the same way. As usual, this is Trav, and I hope you all have a great and safe day. Be careful.